The beauty of one pager is that every element of your chart is customizable. So if you want to change the formatting of one aspect or another, it's very easy to do. There are two main ways to format your chart, and we'll start with the method that's going to save you the most time in the long run. The ability to format your chart automatically based on the data already in your underlying project plan is what makes OnePager so powerful. Instead of having to hand format your chart like you would do in PowerPoint, OnePager has a patented formatting engine that enables you to set default formats for your chart and have the settings take effect based on however you've set up the data in your project schedule. All of the automated formatting in OnePager is controlled by the Chart Properties button, which is what makes it the most important concept that you can learn about in OnePager. When you click on Chart Properties, you'll see a number of different tabs with lots of available settings. We have a separate video that gives a more advanced overview of Chart Properties, so this video will just focus on some shortcuts to achieve automatic formatting quickly and easily for beginning users. Most of the formatting changes you'll make will either be on the Taskbars tab or the Milestones tab. These two tabs are closely related, and many of the settings are the same. It's just a question of whether you're trying to format Taskbars or Milestones. In this video, we'll focus on the Taskbars tab with the understanding that most of the same settings also exist on the Milestones tab. To change the default shape of your Taskbars, click on the Shape dropdown. You'll have more options for milestone shapes than for taskbar shapes, just because taskbars are always going to be rectangular in nature. Click Apply, and you'll see the taskbars change shape in the background. Because we clicked Apply instead of OK, the Chart Properties form stays open, and we can continue to make more changes. To change the height of your tasks, adjust this number. In the US, this is going to be in inches, elsewhere in the world, in centimeters. Keep in mind that you can type into this box. You are not limited to the values presented by the up and down arrows. Here, we'll reduce the size of our bars slightly. This next section walks through the different decorations that taskbars can have. In this case, we have labels, or the names of the tasks, plus percent complete, critical path, and baselines. If that's too much information and we want to simplify the look of the chart, we can turn off critical path, and then turn off baselines, and then finally click OK so that only the task labels and the percent complete remain, like this. If you want to change the font for all of your taskbars, return to Chart Properties and to the Taskbars tab, and then click on the Taskbar Label Properties button to adjust the font size, color, and other options from there. Here, let's decrease the font slightly and change it from a black color to gray. Notice that all of the taskbars change their default font to a smaller gray font. However, the milestone at the bottom retains the larger black font. This is because taskbar fonts are controlled on the taskbars tab, while milestone fonts are controlled on the milestones tab. Speaking of color, one of the most popular things to format in one pager is the main color of the tasks and milestones themselves. In Chart Properties, there are three different ways to assign colors. Let's start with the default, which is what's called round robin color. Here, one pager is color coding by resource names. You can change this round robin color to any other field from your project plan. In this case, let's switch from resources to the level one summary name or parent task. Once you click OK, you'll see that one pager reformats the bars in the chart so that each family of tasks gets its own color. Round Robin Color allows you to quickly and easily assign different colors to different categories of tasks, but it doesn't give you a lot of deliberate control as to which color goes where. We'll talk about how to do that in just a minute. The second way to assign color, especially if you're looking for a simpler chart, is to just use one color. Right above Round Robin Color, you can set all tasks to a single default color. Now, all of the tasks in the chart are the same shade of gray, and the only color remaining are the progress bars attributable to percent complete. The third and most powerful way to assign color is OnePager's patented conditional formatting engine. If you click on the Manage Rules button, 
you will see that you have the ability to write one or more rules that easily define which colors should be assigned when. Here's an example of conditional formatting rules based on status. When we apply these rules, one pager will assign colors based on the conditions you've defined. By the way, conditional formatting is not limited to color. It can also assign shapes, sizes, borders, and fonts dynamically. We have a more advanced video on conditional formatting that we do recommend watching if you'd like to learn more about how it works in detail. Let's cover a few more formatting basics that are easily accessible through chart properties. If we go to the main tab, this is where you can control the chart background. Currently, the background of the chart is set to swim lane stripes, but we can change it to solid with the click of a button. Popular choices for backgrounds include the solid background, swim lane stripes, and row stripes. On the time axis tab, you can quickly adjust the start and finish dates of your chart. This is useful if you need to add or remove white space from the left or right edge of your chart, here, we can add a month to the beginning, and you'll see that everything shifts over. On the Rows and Swim Lanes tab, you can change the order in which tasks appear, or whether tasks are lined up left to right like a timeline, or top to bottom like a Gantt chart. You can also choose to group tasks into one or more levels of swim lanes. The Rows and Swim Lanes tab has a lot of options, and is so powerful that it too is worthy of a more detailed explanation in its own video. To learn more about rows and swim lanes and how to easily optimize your chart layout, please watch that video as well. The Page Layout tab enables you to control the size and aspect ratio of your overall chart. If your chart is too tall or too narrow, you can either adjust the document width here, or you can adjust the default row height here. By the way, remember that you can also adjust your shape height on the Taskbars and Milestones tabs. The shape height and the row height are closely related. If you want to increase or decrease the amount of white space between each task or milestone, it's usually a question of looking at the shape height and comparing it to the row height. The bigger the row height is compared to the shape height, the more white space you'll have. As you can see, there are a lot more formatting options in chart properties than can be covered in this introductory video, so we encourage you to explore things a bit on your own as well. Remember that nothing you do in one pager will ever corrupt your project plan, and there's always an undo button to back out of something that you don't like. So get in there, experiment a little bit, and have some fun. All of the changes that you make in chart properties will be saved when you save your chart. When you open your chart or update it later with fresh project data, any changes that you made in chart properties will automatically carry forward without the need to do them over again. In addition, all of the changes that you make in chart properties can be saved to a template. The template is a generic set of styles and rules that can be shared between teammates. This way, if everyone on your team wants to create the same style of chart from a few different projects, you can build one chart first, copy its settings to a template, and then everybody can use that template with their own project plans to create charts that have the same look and feel. The second way to make changes to your one-pager chart is by doing your formatting manually. We generally discourage manual changes if you can make those same changes through chart properties. There are a few reasons for this. First, changes that you make manually do not necessarily reflect the reality of your project plan, so there is always a question of data integrity. For example, if you set up conditional formatting to assign color by status, you have a good degree of confidence that a red task is actually late. On the other hand, if you manually paint tasks red with your mouse, are you completely confident that the task is late, or did you miss something when you were making those updates? Data-driven is always better. Second, changes that you have made manually usually cannot be saved back to a template. When you make changes manually, those changes apply to specific tasks and milestones in your chart and are not being made in a general sense. One-pager templates that you might want to share with colleagues do not contain any task or milestone data from your project, only general settings. So by definition, when you hand format a task, you will not be able to capture that formatting in a template for future use. That said, 
Manual changes that you make will always be saved back to the chart in which you made them. So if you're just updating the same chart each week as your project schedule changes, you can rest assured that any manual formatting you did previously will carry forward as you make those updates as long as you're using the same chart as before. Let's walk through a few manual changes that you might make. To change the name of a task, double click on the label of the task itself and edit the text. This won't change the name of the task in your project plan, just here in one pager. It's useful if you have lengthy task names in your project plan and you want to shorten them in one pager for better readability. To change the font or style of a piece of text, left click on that piece of text. We'll grab two at once here by holding down the control key while selecting. Then use the font controls on the home tab. If you find that your text is cluttered and you need to reposition something, you can use the text positioning drop-down to move that label to a different spot. To change the color of a task or milestone, click on that task or milestone to select it, and then use the paint bucket on the home tab. Again, you can do this for one task at a time, or you can do a multi-select. There are more advanced formatting options available behind the Format button. For example, if we want to change the shape of just one bar, we can left click on that task, then click on the Format button, and change the shape to something different. Notice that the Format form has a lot of other settings. You can also enlarge the task to make it stand out more, or you could turn a task label on or off. Maybe you want to show a key milestone date. If you think you're going to be doing a lot of manual formatting, we encourage you to explore the format form in more detail. Shapes can also be dragged up and down. They can't be dragged left or right because that would get them too far out of sync with your project plan, but minor vertical adjustments are okay. When you move a shape, there's often an empty row left behind. To remove that empty row, click on the Hide Rows button. For more information, please review our other videos, or you can visit onepager.com forward slash support or email us at support at onepager.com.